Hey friends, it's Andy coming to you live from Ventura, California. Ventura? Ventura? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I had a brain fart for a second. Hey, uh, nice to see you. Um, we are going to be talking about a few things today, but uh, the first bit of news, obviously, is I've shaved, right? And I've shaved, uh, you know, clean up a little bit for y'all. I hope that makes you guys happy. Somebody told me, somebody sent me a text message, Andy, you got to shave the beard. So I said, hey, Amy, nice to see you. Um, and so, and feeling good. I, I am on oxygen. I got a big old oxygen tank. I feel like a, you know, like a, I don't know, like an old geezer uh, with a big old machine that makes a lot of noise at night. It's like an iron lung uh, that I have to lay in. No, it's just I got these tubes I got up in. But I'm, I'm feeling much better. Um, still on some uh, steroids uh, and, um, and yeah, overall feeling pretty good. I'm still supposedly contagious until Saturday, so I can't go home. Um, the five kids are still at home. Uh, again, want to thank all my friends that are bringing over meals. I, I hesitate to say one name or another because I'm not sure who brought over the meal today. Uh, but uh, every day, uh, a friend of my the church that I uh, used to attend, and I hate saying that because they're still all friends of mine over there, at Yorba Linda Friends Church. Uh, but uh, my my Bible study, um, they've gotten together, and they for every night that I've been gone, they've been cooking meals for or or purchasing meals for my kids, and and taking them to the kids, which is you know we live in an incredible world, and that is why I want to talk to you today about what it is we're going to do in the future. Uh, I, I should actually talk about the couple sponsors that I've really neglected talking about, but let's just go ahead and talk about today's CBD oil. Go to today's CBD oil. Uh, oh, what happened there? Wow, I clicked on a bizarre button. Stand by, I gotta go back to the banners or else it'll throw me off. Today's Happy Coffee, todayshappycoffee.com. Go to todayshappycoffee.com. Uh, uh, it works on the, the uh, happy hormones, the dopamine, the oxytocin, the serotonin, the endorphins, and uh, boosts your metabolism. Uh, it uh, has appetite, appetite suppressant uh, since I started using it. I've lost a lot of weight. You've seen the pictures. I'm not going to show you today. You've seen enough of my ugly mug over the last couple of days, so we're not going to have to subject you to my uh, fat stomach uh, from several months ago. All right. And then we got today's CBD oil. One of the greatest on the planet by Viseo, one of the top 50 healthcare companies in the world. Fantastic company. I love them. Uh, I miss going to the conventions with all those people, but uh, the fantastic. So you got the CBD oil and then you got all the other Viseo products. Make sure and try some of those products. Uh, I wish I would have had some of the Renew and um, Eternal, uh, which I'm sure would have helped in my healing process and in building my immune system. I was just out and uh, didn't have any that I could take with me to the hospital, but that would have been fantastic. Great, great metabolism of boosters and um, uh, immune boosters, I'm sorry, and um, just some really great products over there at the sale. All right, so let me go ahead and get into the daily devotional today. I, I really am kind of struggling as to what direction this show will actually be taking now we're kind of in a different mode we're in the mode of saving our country uh, before we were in the mode of getting uh, president trump elected which is still not out of the realm of possibilities uh, but um, either way either way we're going to be under attack i, I don't care if um, uh, uh, you know we find a bunch of uh, illegal ballots and they destroy you know, the ones that they claim were for, for uh, Biden when in fact they weren't. Um, I don't know, you know, all the ins and outs of what's going to happen necessarily. I've, I've been watching now a little bit more often. Um, regardless, it doesn't matter. He's going to, if he's back in presidency for, four, can you imagine? Can you imagine if we get through all this and he gets back into the next four years? Wow, this is going to be so much fun. And so we need to be strong. We need to strive, be strong mentally. Uh, with ourselves, we need to be strong mentally with God, and uh, we need to be strong as conservatives. And I think that is the direction I want to go. I'm just not quite sure how that will all develop. I do know I have some, uh, you know, other people that we're going to be getting involved here and doing some other stuff and creating uh, some other content, uh, say maybe some events and some other stuff. I, I do know that. I'm just not really exactly sure how that's going to look. But I want to do uh, make sure, and th because today's reading and today's devotional, I think helps um, me 
again, this is a very selfish show because it's mostly about me and what my needs are and, and how you guys can help me <laughs> uh, bring bring content to you and bring stuff to you. Um, but but I, I think that today's passage really is kind of like over the series of uh, months that I've been doing this, today's kind of is the call culmination of what has been happening over the last several months and where um, I need to make sure to be today. I got to go to the stupid glasses, so I'm sorry. All right. So today is uh, November 12th, um, the changed life, the changed life. It has been a changed life over the last several months, last six months, virtually a changed life. And I'm not afraid to tell you, I will tell you everything. If there's anything that you don't know about me or you think that I'm fudging about or my past and who I was before and who I am now and my struggles with who um, I'm trying to become as I move forward, I will tell you it all. That's just who I am. All right. So let's talk about this. What understanding do you have of the salvation of your soul? The work of salvation means that in the real in the real life, in real, oh, Lordy, be alive. Let's do that one more time. The work of salvation means that in your real life, things are dramatically changed. You no longer look at things in the same way. Your desires are new and the old things have lost their power to attract you. One of the one of the tests of determining of the work of salvation in your life is genuine is has God changed the things that really matter to you? And yes, they have. Yes, he has. He has. It's been amazing what he's changed in my life. Um, if you still yearn for the old things, which I do, it is absurd to talk about being born from above. You are deceiving yourself. If you are born again, the spirit of God makes the change very evident in your real life and thought. And when a crisis comes, you are the most amazed person on earth at the wonderful difference there is in you. There is no possibility of imagining that you did it. It is the complete and amazing change that is the very evidence that you are saved. What difference has my salvation and sanctification made? For instance, can I stand in the light of 1 Corinthians 13 or do I squirm and evade the issue? True salvation worked out in me by the Holy Spirit frees me completely. And as long as I walk in the light as, as he is in the light, 1 John, uh, 1 John, 1 John sees nothing because it has itself into every detailed part of my being. Let me read that again. His life is working itself into every detailed part part of my being, not on the conscious level, but even deeper than my consciousness. Lord, listen, um, um, uh, laying in the hospital, um, just other things that are happening in my life. Uh, I, I, I really feel like every day I've woken up with a little new part of me from God, a little shift, a little change, a little, a little part of the old is dying. Right? You got this old tissue, old scar damage, old memories, old bad habits, bad habits um, uh, and they are beginning to kind of just fall away and become less important. And other things are coming in, like listening uh, to a, a sermon, uh, reading my daily devotional, uh, reading on my Bible app, uh, listening to um, uh, you know worship music. Uh, Whatever that is, that, that that shift in my life to to bring these things in along with and again, listen to me here, is that there is a lot of frustration and anger with which the direction of the country is going. And I think those two things go hand in hand with my new conviction in with God and salvation and, and, and belief in God and Jesus and the power of Jesus Christ in my life. It's given me more power to make better decisions to understand what's happening in our world and what my role might be in that world to changing it, not only for my children, uh, but for us as a collective of uh, conservative Republican, God fearing people uh, of what we're not going to lay down and die. Like we did back before we we've laid down and been dormant for decades, not for months, not for years, not since Donald Trump has been president, but for decades, we've allowed this to happen. We've allowed our churches to die. Uh, we've allowed our, um, our our children's schools to go to shit heck. Uh, we, <laughs> we've uh, we have allowed that to happen. We've allowed Black Lives Matter uh, teachings to come into our school. We've allowed sexual education to come into the, uh, the, the the K level of our education. We've allowed those people to become to, to get into power. We did we we took our eye off the ball. 
We allowed these liberals in California to take over our entire country where they don't need our vote to make changes in the law. How did that happen? We were asleep. We did nothing. We thought, oh, they're harmless little, little tw twits that are, are not going to destroy our world. No, they are dangerous, devilish, democratic, liberal, um, crazy lunatics is what they are. Um, and so this is where we're at. And so when I went about salvation, I'm talking about my movement towards a, um, a new Andy, is really old and um, is false teachings. I'm trying to teach you something, talk to you about something that's not truly happening. Uh, I'm hoping that, that my sincerity is coming across. And I, and I think it's important for you to have somebody, if I'm that voice, and I, and I think I am because people keep watching and people keep sending me messages and they said, how come you haven't been on in a while? Where have you been? Uh, and so I know that there's people that are watching and, and, and interested in what's going on. And um, I, I think that there's something that God is telling me that, Andy, you need to use your voice, however that's going to look like over the next several months to um, help in bringing uh, an awakening to conservative Christians in Orange County, in California, and in the United States of America. I was just laying in bed and I was watching um, a, a video of, um, of scapes, right? You gotta, you gotta um, uh, uh, gosh, I have one. I don't know why I can't think of what the name is. Uh, um, a, a flying thing. <laughs> A drone. Oh, my gosh. Uh, as I fly my drone around and take this very similar photographs and pictures of that thing, when, when I when I watch this video that has some very soft music and you really begin to see the beauty of our world and God's hand on everything in this world, it is just so silly that we've thrown it all away here in the United States of California. We've thrown away our freedoms. We've thrown away um, uh, our rights. We're, we're about ready to throw away our constitution. And um, and it is a shame that we have we have allowed that. The, 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 the beauty and strength of God, what he has given us as a gift in so many different ways, we are very close to simply throwing it away uh, and, um, and, and we need to get strong. So I'm going to, I'm going to bring up a couple things. I'm going to talk about these four C's. These came up in somebody's message. Now I already forgot. It might've been Mark's. Um, and then I added a few things here and there, uh, and brought them up myself. Let me just say hi to a couple people. Hey, Carol, nice to see you. Uh, glad you are here. And you're looking good. Glad to see you're feeling better. Yes, I feel great. Thank you very much. Hey, Priscilla. Awesome to see you. Your bright smiley face there. Carl Whitney. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad. Well, I'm not quite home yet, but I'm I'm close. I'm out of the hospital. That's the most important thing. You get a little tired being in that 10 by 10 room. I I, I will never make it in prison. Um, <laughs> you're awake. I need peace. I'm, I've been screaming active in politics for 12 years. Need calm. Thanks for being calm in this crazy world. Well, I don't know how much calm I'm going to bring because I can get, if you've been watching long enough, I can get pretty crazy. All right. So let me talk about these four C's. And these four C's are going to be important because uh, I think that they need to be kind of like a, a foundation. Everything needs a foundation. When I went to the police department, there was a foundation of training. Uh, when I was training police dogs, there was a foundation of training police dogs. When um, you are building a, a corporate uh, a company, like the security company I built, there's a, there's a foundation that you build your company on and, and a foundation. When we're talking about a movement, I, I'm sure you found it, and I found these four, four scenes to be very important um, and not to be exactly what you may interpret these words to me, but I'm, I'm going to give you my interpretation of what they mean to me and why that I think they're important. All right. So let me go ahead and bring up this first one here. And the, the first C that I want to bring up is um, the uh, commitment, uh, uh, contentment, contentment. And I don't want you to get confused. I'm not content with the way the world is, right? Obviously, because I just told you I'm not. I'm not content with the way the United States is, California, the schools, uh, you know, where, where my children are going to be um, uh, learning, what teachers are going to be learning for that kind of stuff. But contentment, contentment in this case means am I content in my in my position on this planet as a man and a God-fearing man, a family man, and maybe potentially a, a future husband of some sort. And so if you, if you take all those things, those are all really important things. Me as a man, you as a woman, where your role is, uh, if you're, you know, uh, uh, Whitney, if you're, if, uh, you, know, uh, you know, if you're watching, uh, are you content in who you are as a man or do you have some work to do? Where, what, what are those things that you need to work on uh, to be more content with who you are so that you now can move forward understanding that you are content with where you are with God, most importantly, and his word and his teachings and, and conservative um, um, beliefs and what it means to 
protect the Constitution of the United States. That contentment is where you're at. Do you accept it? Are you content? Are you truly content in that feeling of who you are? And um, the, the most of uh, what God has given you, do you have all the tools or do you need more tools? So if you're not content with where you're at now, what do you need to do to move towards contentment? Uh, do you need to spend more time in the word? Do you need to spend more time with other men in a men's group? Do we need to get together and have lunch together and spend time together? What is it that we need to do to bring more contentment in your life that you are ready to move forward, that you're content, that you have what it takes mentally, right? The mental strength, the, the physical strength, the desire to go out and teach and be in front of men to be a leader. Where are you on your contentment with God? And the strength that you have going on um, within yourself to move forward. I'm not talking about being content. With, we're not content with the way things are. I don't want you to get confused that that's what I'm talking about. Don't just sit back. Oh, I'm content. That's how we got into this trouble. We use content in the other way where we were content with, well, how bad can it be? We get a couple liberals in. They make a couple changes in our school. The kids will be fine. You know, they're hardy. <laughs> They'll get through it. Not that big of a deal. No, that's not what I'm talking about. We're not content. We're not going to be content with that. But are we content with who we are in within ourselves and what God wants from us and expects from us? <clears throat> are we content that we understand that he's already paid the price for us? Now, what are we going to do to pay him back in a sense? Now, do you, does he expect you to pay him back? No. I'm just saying as, as a man, you know, I owe a lot to God that he's been so good to me and patient because I, I've been an ass for most of my life. <laughs> and there he, he's still there. He goes, I know you're an ass. I'm waiting for you. Um, and uh, am I, I'm I right here. I, I'm, I've, gone no, I've gone nowhere. I'm not lost. I'm standing here for you. And you're an ass. When you get done being an ass, reach out for my hand and take it and, um, and then follow me. Follow me, read my word, be in my word, be in my presence, fill me in your heart, listen for my voice, which I have a very tough time doing. Listen for me, and I think I've been hearing it and I didn't even know. All right, so uh, I know I spent a long time on that content. I just wanna make sure it's very clear. Not content in the circumstances, but I'm content where I am now, finally. I have not been this content in a very long time. And I'm, I'm very content. I was so content earlier that I think, you know, people may have thought that I was kind of like in a fog and kind of like in my own self for a second. But I, I was content today, finally sitting out of prison, sitting in a bed with my oxygen tank on and just sitting there and just content. Like, wow, I think I think I got this. I, I, I think I at least got the, the, the beginning stages and I'm content with where I am now as a man. And that is a good thing. I don't want anybody to look at that as a bad thing. I'm being egotistical or anything like that. Um, <clears throat> I could be younger. <clears throat> I could be stronger. I could not be sick. Uh, but um, I'm very, very, very content with where I am uh, on my growth and the uh, amount of scars that are kind of dropping off, the, the, the wounds, you know, the, the, the things that just need to be shed. Now, you never forget the past, but you don't need to live in the past. We need to move forward and we need to take what we learned in the past and use it for our future. Uh, really important. All right. All right. I'm going to get off of that. That was a really long, much longer than I wanted to be on. Okay. Conviction. Oh, this has been a good one. So the conviction is something that's brand new. Brand new with me. What is your conviction? What's the, what's the conviction? So faith in God is constantly tested. So if, if as I'm learning, right, I, I, I tell you all the time, I'm a child in, in this, um, in my walk with God, even though it's been 15, 20 years that I've been on this walk, it's just, I've been, I've tripped, I fell, I fall down the hill, I get back up, I go, go climb back up the hill, <laughs> I fall off the ladder, I get back on the ladder, uh, I go completely, completely sideways, and then I come back again, right? So over the last 15, 20 years, it's been, I've not been convicted, right? But the conviction has come over the last six months very strongly. And so um, my faith in God is constantly, has been constantly tested, but I've noticed that I've not fallen off the ladder, I've not fallen down the hill, I've not, um, I've not had a major malfunction, uh, a few weaknesses here, a few random thoughts here, um, some I think that, you know, not, listen, not, come on camera, not ever have I, uh, at least in the last six months, um, my, has my conviction been um, weakened? to the point that I've, I'm losing my conviction. No, my, the, the conviction is strong and it's been constantly tested and it will always be tested, constantly tested. Um, your conviction will constantly, oh, I just read that. Faith in God is constantly tested. Your conviction 
will constantly be, be tested. So not only your faith in God will constantly be tested, but your conviction will constantly be tested. So both those things are, are going to be happening all the time, right? The devil's going to come in all the time and say, hey, this is God talking when in fact it's not God. It's the devil. Uh, there's going to be times where you um, uh, wake up in the morning and your first thought is old to go back to the old person that you were before. Like, well, let's get up and let's go on the internet and see what's going on. Let's, um, you know, let's go call that old friend and see if they're ready to go out and party and do something else. Now, you know, you're going to have those old thoughts that kind of come back in again, but it's just simply, just simply brush them away and say, that's, that's not necessary. Um, my friend now is, is God. My friend now is my best friend. My friend now is, uh, you know, a, a Bible study with men. My, 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 my new Friend is this whatever, whatever thing. I'm not telling you you have to get rid of fun. Actually, I'm having more fun now than I probably ever had in my entire life. More clear-headed, um, feeling more um, focused uh, than I ever have before. And so, hey, it's it's just it's a different time in life. So your conviction is important. Make sure that you're strong in your conviction. Don't get weak. It's going to be constantly tested. Your conviction with God and your relationship with God will also constantly be tested. Just stay strong um, and understand that you're human. Uh, and so things will happen, but you need to, to move forward. All right. The next C is courage. Courage, it sounds like, well, yeah, yeah, courage. But everybody talks about having courage. And you talk about courage, you're a cop and all this kind of stuff. Um, uh, listen, uh, this is different. This is different. And I learned a new phrase here. Where is my thing? Uh, but courage is something that I never gave this kind of thought to. And this is what uh, I found on courage. Courage is only possible if you treasure God more than anyone or anything else. Courage is only possible if you treasure God more than anyone or anything else. Now, as a, as a father and a, you know, a husband twice, um, you're thinking you have to put your wife first or you think you have to put your children first. And I've always struggled with people that said, no, God comes first. I go, well, I can't see him. I don't, I don't necessarily hear him. He's really not. I mean, some days I think about him. Some days I don't think about him at all. How is it possible I could put God first? And it wasn't, again, I'm coming into these last six months, is it realized that it, he has to be first. <laughs> right? He has to be above all else because it makes all those relationships better. Right? It, it's, it's, he's the, he is the, um, the glue, and I hate to use God in such a you know a, a small word, but He is the glue that keeps everything together. Uh, I remember Pastor Jack talked about um, the atom, and that the nobody understands the atom, how the atom stays together. That there's no reasonable, common sense um, uh, reason why an atom stays together. There's a force. There is something beyond our comprehension that is holding all these little atoms together. And that is the same thing that's holding our life together. That is what the same thing that's holding our relationships together. It is the same thing that's holding us together as a family when you have children. And when we don't have God as that power of holding this atom, this, the family atom, the marriage atom, the, every, the, the your, your men's group atom together, when you don't have that, it falls apart. And horrible things happen. Thing, people die. Uh, things explode. Um, uh, businesses end. Uh, you go into bankruptcy. Uh, you get a divorce. You have you cheat on your wife. You everything happens when you don't have the bond of God holding things together. And so you have to put them first because it is the bond that holds all those things together. So when we're talking about courage, and I'll read this up one more time, is that courage is only possible if the treasure, if you treasure God more than anyone or anything else, because when you get into trouble, when you need courage, then your belief, your contentment, your conviction, and your courage and having God, number one, is what's going to get you through the difficult times where you need courage. It, it could be simply that you're driving down the road and you see somebody with a gun holding a, a woman hostage and you get out and you help, right? That knowing that God is there with you in those moments, whether you live or die and, and trying to save somebody's life, that, 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 that putting God first and him being in everything you do is going to give you the courage to get through that and make good sound decisions. I, I, I have to tell you, even in my weakest days as a cop, when I was not with God and I hated God, I was so pissed at God as a cop for most of my 21 years as a police officer. I hated him. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. I hated God. I was a child molest, uh, sex offender um, uh, investigator. I was involved in, you know, other things where children were um, brutalized and killed and, and heads chopped off and all kinds of stuff. And so uh, you, 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 you know, how is this possible? This is happening in a God, in a world where God supposedly exists. Um, but that's, that's evil, right? You got, you got evil. 
That's why we need God. Uh, and so even in those times when I was coming into a situation, um, and I always felt there was some power around me, protected me and, 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 and there. And that's why I know God has never left you, even in my biggest asshole days, right? He's always there. And, and now I understand it more. And I'm going to show one more time. I, 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 I just ran into this and I'm not sure who said it or where I got it from. But when I, when I read this, courage is only possible if you treasure God more than anyone else. Else, really that point, and where the hold on, there we go. Um, uh, comes from, especially now as I move forward and having to speak. Now, it's not unusual that I have to speak on some things I don't, don't have a lot of knowledge in, but as I'm moving forward talking about politics over the last six months, as I'm moving forward talking about God, obviously, I've been talking about God a lot lately, um, and my devotional and what he means to me and, and, and maybe possibly interpret things correctly, maybe not correctly. I don't know, but I, I don't have any fear of doing it because I know God is covering me. And I think sometimes God is speaking through me, not in a weird way, but in a good way that based on what I've been listening to and reading and paying attention to and writing in my journal, that, that somehow is coming through in a message. Uh, and I'm just merely, uh, the uh, the speaker, uh, you know, the speaker where the, the whatever God has given me to talk about and to say is happening. And so it's allowing me to do that without fear and having God giving me the courage to be able to sit here and speak about something. Because I know people who know me from my past. That's why I bring it up, because I know there's people that know me from my past. and know what a horrible person I was. Um, and, and I don't mean I was a murderer or a rapist or anything like that. Uh, I just was, I was not a nice guy sometimes uh, and maybe still not a nice guy all the time. But, um, um, I, I, but knowing that I have no fear, I don't care. I don't care. Like Carl Whitney knows me for years as a police officer. Uh, other people that have been on, uh, Carol Texley knows me for 30 years as a police officer. So she knows some aspects of me we didn't hang out in the entire uh, my entire career um but we all know each other's past right we all know other people's past and things and so coming on and knowing that people know all about me there's a lot of people on here that know all about me i have no fear um i lack no uh, i have no lack of courage to come on here and talk about things like this and to admit to you that now this is a new stage in life that and and i'm convicted because our country needs us our country needs you um my country needs me. My state needs me. My children need me. I, I'm always going to come back to my children because that's where it all begins. I, I would probably still do this if I didn't have children, but I'm telling you, it surely is a motivator to know that my children will have to live in this world in the way that I leave it. And if I do nothing, if I do nothing, shame on me. My kids don't deserve to look at me with pride or respect. If I sit here knowing that I have knowledge or I have an ability or I have a voice to try to make a difference and I did nothing with it. That is my biggest fear. So the courage I get from God to be able to do this is far more powerful than anything I think I've ever done in my entire life. I, I, I truly do. I, I, for whatever reason, I'm feeling more convicted. I'm more content in my ability to do it and have more courage because where I am as a man now, mostly because it's necessary for the future of my children and their children. Because I know they all want to have kids. All my kids want to have kids and they want to have a family. And if I sit here as just a small part uh, of, of what could maybe, be, maybe bring some change or maybe um, start some type of movement, I don't know. You know, uh, there's, there's just tens of thousands of people who as one person make huge differences in this world. Uh, is that me? I don't know, but uh, it, it, maybe I, I, I just, one of my sons just sent my, my youngest son, my seven year old just sent me a video. He, he's talking on a video, like he has a YouTube channel. He's seven years old and he's using words and comment. Then he may be the next guy, right? Whatever it is that I'm doing, maybe he's the next young conservative that comes on and changes the world of children of conservative Christian based boys uh, coming up in this world. I kind of see that. He's talking about vampires right now. That, that, don't worry about that. <laughs> but he can be the guy. It can be the thing. So does this, I hope this is all making sense. And I hope I'm not rambling too much. But I'm, I'm trying to kind of give you an idea of where uh, this, uh, this, this stage in my life and what's going to be happening over the next several months. All right. Um, and then number four, last, last one is consistency. Yeah, consistency is tough. And consistency is important in, in dog training. It's important, and again, in police work and business. It's, you know, having that consistency. Some of the best, best businesses in the world 
are successful because they are consistent. You can go to a McDonald's in any country and it's consistent, right? There's not really a lot of difference between McDonald's in Hong Kong as there is Hong Kong or as there is a, a McDonald's in Orange County, California, right? And so consistency is extremely important for success in a whole bunch of things. And that includes in your faith in God. Um, so consistency in prayer, in, in being around uh, godly friends, uh, reading the Bible, uh, listening to messages, um, having discussions with your, your boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, uh, children, um, uh, other friends that you're around, just having discussions about what's going on in the world and how it, how it reflects on God or how it reflects on our church or how it reflects on uh, moving forward in the basis of uh, teaching our children good, solid principles in school and U.S. history and our past, the bad past, the good past, whatever that means, and how we're going to use that to move our country forward. But staying consistent in your studies, staying consistent in staying focused, staying consistent in being in the word, staying consistent in all those things, this was really going to make a difference. So uh, just to bring all four of them together, contentment in who you are in your in you, in your belief with Jesus Christ and God um, and, and being strong, um, your conviction, always know it's going to be challenged, it's going to be tested and don't give in to the challenges and tested, but stay convicted. All right. Uh, courage comes from believing that God is more important than anything else in this world, anything or anyone. And then consistency, staying consistent and uh, make sure that you keep all those things intact. Those four C's were important foundation that I, I wanted to talk about today. I've had them written down for the last four or five days. I've been looking at them and reading them and, and just kind of measuring them out. For me, again, I think it was uh, Mark uh, Dreskel, uh, Pastor Mark Dreskel in, in um, uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, has a great ministry out there. Trilogy, I think it's called, um, is fantastic. He has some really great men's um, messages. If you just go to YouTube and, and look up uh, Pastor Mark Dris Driscoll, um, Trinity Church in Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, you will find them. And just go through the series if you're a man watching. If you're a woman watching, again, I, I don't discriminate like that. But, <laughs> uh, but I, I know we need some men uh, that are going to be strong. So go through those. I want to just bring up one last thing really quick. Let me look at a couple of a bunch of comments came in there suddenly. That was weird. Um, Amen. Oh, thank you, Maria. Hey, Maria, my cuz. What's happening, cuz? Um, I'm so happy to see you laughing and jovial as usual. Yo, hey, Karen, nice to see you. Thanks. Uh, we love you, Andy. Thank you. I love you, too. I uh, love to hear your laugh, cuz. Yeah, great talk. Thanks. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Maria. All right. Let me just uh, end on these few things. Um, not everyone's going to be happy about, about this ending, but hey, this is uh, the way life is. Um, and so um, I... And it's only because I'm still in this COVID thing, right? Uh, everybody knows I have it. Um, they know that um, I've been through it and I've talked about it for months. Uh, the, the, the stupidity of shutting down our country, the stupi stupidity of, of national mask mandates, of shutting down our world is dumb based on all the science, all the way from the beginning. I've been reading studies. I've been watching um, uh, other doctors talk. We have Dr. Erickson who goes to our church, who uh, has had great discussions both at our church and then of course on YouTube, he's been shut down. Um, I've interviewed Dr. Um, uh, Coach uh, about uh, uh, hydrolytic, hydro hydroxychloroquine, hydro hydroxychloroquine, that thing, HQ. Um, and um, I mean, tons of stuff, I research it. Um, and where it involves in our children and getting them back into school, that kind of stuff. We we know it's not a hoax because I had it. I never said it was a hoax. Somebody said, hey, no, it's not so much. I never, I never said it was a hoax. And the president of the United States never said it was a hoax. You guys are morons. That never happened. All right. It is that we didn't need to do what we needed to do. Now, there was nothing wrong with doing it for 14 days to figure out, hey, let's shut this down for a second. Whoa, let's shut that. That happens all the time. We shut down SWAT deployment sometimes. Go, okay, hold on. Let's stop for a second. Let's reevaluate back up. Okay, let's go in, right? Uh, same thing with this. So, you know, let's, let's hold a shut down the country for 14 days. 14 days. 14 days turned into six months. And now Biden's coming in and talking about shutting down the country again and going to mask mandates. What a moron. You guys voted for him. You're stupid. All right. So um, I just want to say, I even having it, I'm telling you, is stupid. The, the floor I was on was not full. They were lacking for nothing. They had all the remdesivir. I had seven bags of remdesivir myself. Uh, I've had people message me from other countries that go, wait, you guys have all that remdesivir? They give you seven bags. We don't have any remdesivir in our country. I, I have people from other countries, Italy, and another one from, who else the other country? Um, I want to say, I want to say British Columbia, but I'm not sure. Uh, not British Columbia, um, uh, England. Um, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know for sure Italy, is that we don't have any of that stuff. 
Like I had it in my in my room. Right? I had uh, steroids. I had um, uh, convalescent plasma. I had uh, seven bags of remdesivir. I had every vitamin on the planet. I've had uh, painkillers. I've had tubes stuck in places that you don't want tubes stuck in. Everything has been fantastic. They were fantastic, all right? We have all the treatments. And so when we look at something here, when we, when we talk about it, the reduction of COVID deaths in the United States is all the way down to 99.7% uh, uh, survival, right? 99.7% plus. I think in some studies right now, what we're getting is 99.9, 99.9 recovery. We don't shut down our country for anything and should not shut down our country for anything that is not killing people at a higher rate than 99.7. Listen to me. People are going to die of it. People are going to die of a whole bunch of other crap. And to shut our country down, to go to mass mandates for something that is not simply not killing everybody that you come in contact with is. Talked about way more concerning. And that is a spike in suicides in the United States, Italy, Europe, England, and Israel. Uh, that is occurring right now. I, I heard it earlier and then I looked it up. And in fact, this is what's happening as, as countries and including the United States of America is talking about shutting back down again, is we are going to have far more people die of suicide and other complications of not going to hospitals and getting uh, treatments, of not having their cancer looked at and, and, and reviewed uh, to get early diagnosis. Uh, it, it, the, the numbers of people that are going to die from not opening up our country is going to far surpass what uh, people are dying of COVID-19. And, uh, and it, is, it is a fact based on not just me, not based on just a couple studies here. They're not just based on a couple uh, news media uh, people that are taking a chance and getting on and talking about on social media. It is a fact. People cannot handle being <laughs> shut down, losing their business. I've lost everything. I have nothing in regard to business going on right now. Zero, nothing. All right, so and this is affecting me. I'm lucky that I have a little bit of retirement from the police department. Just kind of keeping some things afloat. And that's it. And so uh, this has been way too long. And now as, as if Biden act, you know, actually does make it through, he's going to shut everything down again. And we cannot let that happen. And this is where my whole discussion kind of comes into place is that we, can, we cannot allow this to happen to our country. We have enough strength. Just because he possibly will be in the White House uh, does not mean that we have to allow this to happen to our country. We have another vote coming up in Georgia, I think, uh, and some other stuff that are coming up. We cannot allow the devils uh, to get in control of this country to the extent that we have no more control. And that means Congress, Senate, um, and the White House. I mean, right now we have the, the Supreme Court, but um, you, we, we can't allow it to happen. And we have to stay strong and we have to make sure that our voices are heard and we have to continue um, to work uh, for the benefit of this country. And it's all up to us. And uh, we're little small parts, I know. But if there's enough of people like me and you and other people that, that spread out the word and continue this work that we're doing, um, I'm so happy to tell you, and I, and I mentioned it before, is that I have three friends of mine that are conservatives that won their elections for the school board for the uh, Placentia de Orville School District, which is fantastic, fantastic news. They kicked out three liberals, three Democrat liberal pieces of crap out of our school board in Orange County. Fantastic. And uh, we got three conservatives on the school board. It is amazing. I'm so pleased and so happy. Um, and those are the little differences that we're going to make. And I, that's why I have chosen to start with Orange County. And that's why I, I, talk, I talked to you yesterday uh, where I was praying to God and he had me write down, you know, Orange County uh, Republic, uh, conservative and then something about kids. And so that is kind of the space that I'm starting uh, and then we'll continue on. Again, I don't have all the details, right? I, I, I'm being honest with you right now. I don't have all the details, but I do have a lot of stuff in, 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 I got a foundation. I got the four C's. I got people. I got things that are happening in my life that uh, I, again, maybe in the next week or two, we'll, we'll be talking more about that kind of stuff. And you're going to start to see this kind of build and get together. I have a seven year old who apparently was going to be a YouTube star. Uh, and uh, we're going to make him the next big uh, conservative child star uh, and uh, a, a man of God in our in our show i think he's going to be amazing he's amazing he just made me laugh he just sent me two videos it's been fantastic yes unite yes yes for sure all right so i hope this has been helpful i hope it's helpful for you to see me on the mend and know that this thing ain't going to kill you um that uh, kaiser did a fantastic job the people around me have done a fantastic job of keeping me well helping me out with the children this has not been um you know a, a simple illness 
It's not like I just got sick and everything's going to be okay. No, there was a lot happening around me. A lot of people involved in my circle that mean a lot to me that I've uh, fallen in love with, and um, you, you know, and I had you know friends and that have been more amazing than I, I. I knew they were amazing before, and now I'm just more convinced that they're amazing. And um, it, it's just been really crazy uh, to to see the the, the love, uh, all of you coming on and praying all the time and being here for me. I've been off my oxygen now for the longest time I think I've ever been off my oxygen, which and I feel good. I just about choked on my water. That was it. Um, uh, <laughs> your favorite water, Arrowhead water. Yes, the best. Um, and um, and there you go. So I hope there's been any any more questions, any more things coming up. Anybody have any questions about COVID? I'll give you. I'll stay on just maybe for a couple more minutes before I go. Um, but um, yeah, feeling good. Everything's feeling good. Got uh, dinner. I think just arrived. And uh, we'll be eating some Italian dinner, which is good. Yesterday, I got home from the hospital and um, I've been eating, you know, chicken breast and broccoli, carrots, vanilla ice cream. And then the next day, salmon, you know, carrots, mashed potatoes, rice, <laughs> you know, and every night's kind of been the same thing. And then last night I have a, a big um, like a, a deli Italian salad and um potato skins with sour cream <laughs> and bacon um can i tell you that i was miserable last night in bed my stomach was going Bleh! i thought i was going to explode it wasn't it, it really wasn't a pretty time it really hurt really bad so um that's one thing i'll give you some advice when you come home from the hospital after about seven eight days whatever it's been nine days in the hospital eating bland food not a good idea to go with the uh, oh I mixed Italian with ranch dressing too for the salad. So uh, as I look back now, I said uh, it it seemed like a really good idea at the time. It seemed really smart, uh, but it tasted great. It tasted good when I was eating it, and that was good for I had a moment of satisfaction. But you see what happens in a moment of satisfaction? It blows up everything, including your stomach and the toilet. All right, my friends. <laughs> I thought I'd leave you on that note. How's that? All right, my friends. I love you guys very much. God bless you. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, and always, I'm always looking for your opinion. If you have an opinion and you want to write in the comment, I, I do appreciate any comments that you put in there, good or bad. That Tell me I'm off my rocker. If I'm off my rocker, tell me. Um, if you think that uh, you can help in any way, if you have any ideas, if you have any thoughts, um, private message me, uh, put them in the comments, and uh, that would be fantastic. All right, my friends. I love you guys very much. Where is my, the, this uh, mouse I'm using goes the opposite direction than what I'm used to. So it gives me a second. All right, my friends. I love you. God bless.